Okay, so let's let's solve another problem. Right. So negative four x squared minus six is equal to zero. And if this thing was on the other side, all you would do is bring it over to this to this side, right? The whole the whole point with um, what the whole point the the first thing that you have to do when it comes to solving these types of equations is bringing all the x's to one side of the equation, right? So right now we've got negative four x squared sixteen x. What we want to do is bring the sixteen x over to the side. Now, yeah, we'll we'll discuss another another way we can do this. But what happens if you do it the other way? You're going to lose the solution. Okay? So what happens is you grab this guy, bring it over. So that's negative four x squared minus sixteen x is equal to zero, right? And you're looking for the greatest common factor that you can take out of this, right? For the numbers, you have a 4 here and a 16 there. So that means you can take 4 out of both of them, right? So you're going to take a 4 out. If you want, put your brackets in. So that way you know, you know you're going to fill in the terms here, right? You're going to take a negative 4, or you're just going to take a 4 out. And this has an x squared and that has an x, so you can take out an x. What's left here is, that's negative 4, so you need negative 1 here. And you have an x squared, you got an x, so negative, negative x. Okay. Over here, what do I multiply 4x by to give me negative 16x? Well, all I need is negative 4. And again, you solve for this, you set each one equal to 0. So 4x is equal to 0, so x is equal to 0. Over here, you got negative x minus 4 is equal to 0. That's a negative x, so I'm just going to bring that over instead of bringing the negative 4 over. So it's going to be x is equal to negative 4. And those are our solutions, right? Simple as that, all you do is take out a GCF. Now, I mentioned that there's another way to solve for this, but what happens is you're not eliminating a solution, and you don't want to do that. You, want, you don't want to eliminate any solutions in, in mathematics in general, anyway. So let's, let's, let's solve this equation in another way. And I've seen people do this, and you know, uh, it only gives you half the answer. And most people would look at this and say, OK, we have an x squared and an x. I can't combine those. Or some people would look at this and you know, get a genius idea is, hey, there's an x squared and an x here. So why don't I divide both sides of the equation by x? And that will get rid of one of my, one of my x's again. You can do anything to an equation as long as you do it to both sides. So I could do anything to this as long as I do the same thing to this, right? So I want to get rid of that x, so I'm going to divide by x. I want to, you know, if I'm dividing that by x, this side by x, I have to divide this side by x, right? So this kills this, and this reduces this down to x to the power of 1. So you've got negative 4, x is equal to 16. And then divide by negative 4, divide by negative 4, so x is equal to negative 4. And that's your solution, right? Well, that's only half your solution. We already did this question and we had the other answer where x equals 0 was a solution. But because we divided by an x, we eliminate a solution. And that's one of the one places where I've seen people make a lot of mistakes and they eliminate part of the answer to their equations. And basically when you take it to functions, their functions are not complete, right? You don't, you don't have the second answer. So in general, never divide by an x to get rid of an x uh, because you don't get the full answer. You only get half the picture, and that's not a good thing. Okay. So don't do this. Bad.